I am just so upset that this keeps going on. It grieves my heart that black lives don't seem to matter to this world. I pray that we can overcome one day. No child, teen, person should have to learn, comply, or die. Let us love and stop senseless hate. Love doesn't hurt. Our brother's blood is crying from the ground. Oh God, have mercy. Black lives matter. Tonight, I don't just stand here as, a, as an African-American pastor that, that pastors a predominantly African-American church. But tonight, I stand here before you as a 32-year-old African-American male that has been blessed to father three African-American boys. Let me be honest and transparent tonight about my emotions and my feelings in light of the senseless killing of Terrence Crutcher and the countless of other African Americans that have died throughout America this year by the hands of those who took an oath to protect and serve. So also, I must be honest tonight, I'm extremely frustrated when I ponder and consider that my boys are being raised in a world and in a city that due to their potential size and their color of their skins, their lives can be devalued in a matter of moments to the point of being a big bad dude. I'm extremely frustrated tonight when I hear the overwhelming calls for peace from those who have taken the camera, but no one mentions policing reform in black, brown, and impoverished communities. I'm frustrated tonight when I watched a known terrorist be guilty of a bombing, being arrested, but Terrence's family this Saturday is going to a funeral. My frustration has called me to say repeatedly in the words of family Lou Hamer, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This week I've even raised the questions of that lyrical genius of our yesteryear Marvin Gaye, what's going on? But tonight, Tulsa, my frustration has evolved into a faith to cry out. As a matter of fact, I came to cry out with pastors and with leaders and with other members of our community, like the woman in the, the, woman in the parable told by Jesus and the Gospel of Luke chapter 18. When facing a system of injustice, she wouldn't stop crying until she got justice. And I came to announce to our faith community tonight of Tulsa, tonight we can't stop crying. We must cry for justice until the Terrence Crutchers of our community are walking across graduation stages with the, rather than going to early grades. We must cry for justice until citizens in the inner city are treated with the same respect of those in the suburbs. We must cry for justice until the walls of sy systemic racism and economic disparities crumble in our city. We must cry for justice in November in the voting booth to elect both national, state, and local lawmakers who will be concerned about Main Street and North Lewis and 36th Street. We must cry for justice tonight until it rolls down the hills from us in the book of Amos. And when the hashtags have stopped 
And when the rallies have ceased, and when the national news story is no longer hashtag Terrence Crutcher, we must keep on crying. Young millennials, you got to cry. Generation Xers, we got to cry. Middle-aged baby boomers, you got to cry. And what my community calls the seas and saints, y'all got to cry. And I close with the famous words of a hymn that my big mama taught me in Little Rock, Arkansas. We are soldiers in the army and we have to fight. Although we have to cry, we have to hold up the bloodstained banner. We have to hold it up until the end. Thank you, Tulsa. Thank you, those who love justice and hate evil, for coming out to cry with us. Let us never forget the Terrence Crutchers of the world. Let us continue to fight on until, indeed, the victory we hope for is realized not only in our city, but in our nation and in our world. On behalf of the Crutcher family, I want to thank you for your generosity tonight. Uh, as a result of your gifts, we will pass directly along to the family uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, neighborhood of $5,500. So as it uh, is uh, the custom in our tradition, we want to close out this time in uh, song and this incredible community choir will uh, lead us in a musical selection. And then finally, we will hear uh, the final words of lament and uh, a prayer for us all and especially for the Crutcher family from uh, indeed one of the giants of our community, uh, the Reverend Brother Tisdale, pastor of the Friendship Church Choir, Reverend Tisdale. This song that we're about to sing simply says, it's gotta get better. Not only does it got to be better, but it will get better. Why don't you stand up on your feet and begin to clap your hands, y'all. Clap your hands up, y'all. Clap your hands up, y'all. This one's for closer, y'all.
Why don't you just join? Let's stand on our feet. Let us stand on our feet. Mm -hmm. And just join hands with the person that you stand next to tonight. What a beautiful picture. One thing I do know it is that if Rosa Parks were here, she would be surprised. Because she had most of the white people in the back. She would be surprised to see this picture. But what a beautiful picture. And you know, one of the things that I love for us to do is to be together in unity. We fight against that. And I would say some things tonight, and I would have to stipulate it by saying some of my best friends are white. But we won't belabor the hour because we've had a great time sharing together in a sad time. And my prayer is that Terrence's death is not in vain. We live in a city that is one of the most wealthiest cities in the nation. But if you cross pine, you'll never know it. We live in a city that has some of the most churches per capita than any city. But if you look around, we have some of the nicest races in the city. We also have some that are very good people, but they are just misguided. They would love to hear your story. They need to hear your story. Because sometimes of the privileged abyss, they miss your story. But many are open to hear your story. I sat with a group of pastors and all of them were white and they were asking me questions and trying to get an understanding. They said, we just don't comprehend what it is you face. I said, you'll never be able to do that because until you wake up one morning looking like me, you'll never understand it. But at least we can have dialogue. At least we can come together and reason together. We can have conversation. We can discuss the issues. And for the most part tonight, we've been preaching to the choir. All of us that are here tonight are here for the purpose of coming together to lift up the Crutcher family and to see where we go from here. It's a call to action. Now is the hour. This is the day. And my prayer is that we don't resort to a violence that will be retaliatory and take the lives of others, but that we somehow in some kind of way with hands held together lift up one another 
and just tell our neighbors, say, it's going to get better. Say, I know it looks kind of rough right now, but I got a feeling that it's going to get better. And if we stand together in, in a time such as this, so that Terrence is dying, so that those others that have died senseless deaths at the hand of those who have been called to serve us and protect us, it would be a travesty. But tonight, tonight we want to celebrate the goodness of our God, the graciousness of him, because even in the midst of this, we still have a reason to give him glory. And I don't know if you can just loose your hands for a second and just act like you in a real Baptist church tonight and give God some praise. Here's God again. Tell him, it's God again. Let us pray, join hands again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank tonight Dr. Ray Owens and the Metropolitan Church family who have opened up their facility tonight and called us together as a community and a city. Thank you for this beautiful gathering of all people that have come and assembled themselves together. Rich, poor, black, white, it does not matter. We are here for the purpose of going higher and further. You are gracious, God, to us. You love us. You show justice toward us. And tonight, God, we pray that if you are truly the God of justice, that you would rain down justice in this city, that you would rain it from heaven down into this place, God. All over this nation, God, we've never seen such a divide. The last eight years, we've seen a greater division in our country than we ever have in the last recent years. But tonight, we serve notice on the enemy that his fight is not going to be easy. That you got some believers that are hooked up together tonight. And we're going to serve notice on Satan that Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building up a kingdom all over this land. But Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. And as we close tonight, Father, we lift up the Crutcher family to you. Oh, we lift them up to you, God, right now in the midst of this tragedy. Not only this one, Lord, but they've lost other sons before. And now a greater pain has come. But the nation has taken notice of what's happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And because we are a city poised for greatness, we put ourselves in your hand. So use us because you are God. Have your way in our lives because you can do that. We believe for the impossible. And before it's all said and done, God, we know you're going to get the glory. You're going to get the honor. And you're going to get the praise. So as we close tonight, Father, we say it's going to get better. And we believe sooner than later it's going to get better. So with these hands that are joined together, strengthen my brother, strengthen my sister as we go higher in this name. We bless you and we praise you. Let all the people who love him say amen. Amen. amen.